American Comic Mutant. Lao Wan said I was too extreme. Chapter 16. Mutant Abilities of Mutants. Almost all of them come from the most basic laws of physics. Such as Magneto's magnetic manipulation, and Storm's control of storms and lightning. Therefore, being familiar with relevant physical knowledge can not only help these mutants better master their abilities. It can also develop their abilities better. This is the truth that Charlotte came to after personal experiments. He has been in Los Angeles these days, almost all of his time in the library. He has read a lot of books on mechanics and vectors. Although the upper limit of his ability has not been improved much. But the accuracy of control has been greatly optimized. The means are also much richer than before. The overall strength is about 50% stronger than before reading and studying. This is the benefit of reading more. And Polaris's ability comes from Magneto. It is also a kind of physical law. Naturally, it can be improved and controlled by reading. With Polaris's potential, as long as she can bear to read books, her strength will definitely increase to a great extent in the future. By then, I won't be able to become Charlotte's right-hand man. But at least, I can help him deal with a lot of things. And this is enough for Charlotte. After telling Polaris a few more words and asking her not to go out recently, Charlotte left. Polaris was the only one left in the house. Thinking about fighting side by side with Charlotte in the future, she showed an excited expression. That night, Charlotte returned to her residence. Soon she rested peacefully. However, some people couldn't sleep. For example, General Trask. Not long ago, General Trask got the news. A team of military pursuit teams died in Los Angeles. The death was quite tragic. But these are not the key points. The key point is that the way these people died is too much like Charlotte's handwriting. This also means that if nothing unexpected happens, Charlotte has arrived in Los Angeles. Los Angeles, is this the next city you want to attack? But why is there no movement? General Trask thought with some uneasiness in his heart. Ever since Charlotte disappeared in Miami. He has been searching for Charlotte's traces with all his strength. But he never found any. I thought that with Charlotte's character, he would soon make trouble again. But it didn't happen. It has been more than a month, and it is still calm. So much so that General Trask thought that Charlotte had left America. But now, this speculation has been overturned. Charlotte did not leave, but is still in America, in Los Angeles. It is even possible that Charlotte has lived in Los Angeles for some time. This means that Charlotte is not the kind of reckless man he imagined before. On the contrary, Charlotte is very smart. Moreover, everything he does has a strong purpose. It is definitely not like what Charlotte said, just for revenge. At least not completely. This makes Charlotte more dangerous in the eyes of General Trask. A simple and powerful madman is not enough to be feared. But having power and a smart brain. That's terrifying. To be honest, Charlotte's performance reminded Trask of someone. Magneto. No, even in Trask's opinion, Charlotte is more terrifying than Magneto. Magneto has a brain, but his power is a little bit worse. Magnetic control is also easier to target. However, Charlotte not only has a brain, but also has extremely strong power. Moreover, vector operation. Is there any way to defeat a person who controls vector power? For General Trask, Charlotte is definitely a tricky opponent. What's more difficult is that Charlotte hides in the dark. And they are in the light. Without knowing Charlotte's specific movements, everything is too passive. No one knows what big things Charlotte is secretly planning. And if you want to reverse this trend, there is only one way. Since you don't want to come out, I will force you to come out. We can't let this guy hide any longer. Since it's a bomb, it's better to clear it quickly. General Trask thought fiercely. At present, he only confirmed that Charlotte was hiding in Los Angeles. But he couldn't be sure where Charlotte was hiding in Los Angeles. And what kind of action was he preparing? This is undoubtedly quite passive. And if you want to reverse this disadvantage, the best way is to force Charlotte to show up. In this way, Charlotte will be passive. And General Trask can take the initiative. As for what method to use to force Charlotte to show up. General Trask thought of mutants. Isn't Charlotte known as the savior of mutants? Well, then use mutants to force Charlotte out. If Charlotte doesn't show up by then, it doesn't matter. 
In that case, Charlotte will be completely ruined in the mutant community. No matter which result, General Trask can accept it. So soon. An operation specifically targeting Charlotte, using mutants to fish. Under the arrangement of General Trask, it began. A few days later, a piece of news spread throughout the underground world of America. In order to avenge the mutants, the military will secretly execute a large number of mutants in Los Angeles soon. When this news first circulated, many people did not believe it. But soon, as mutants from all over America were sent to Los Angeles, people could not help but believe this news. Even Professor X, who was at school, heard this news. These days, Professor X has been using his connections to ease the relationship between humans and mutants. Not to mention, the progress is not bad. Relying on his huge money power and the huge connections accumulated over decades, Professor X has persuaded some congressmen and wealthy businessmen to lobby the top leaders of America to relax the control over the mutant population. As a result, just when Professor X himself thought that it might be fruitful soon, he heard such a news. Immediately, Professor X was stunned. If this news is true, if all this really happened, then humans and mutants will never be able to ease the relationship again. At that time, even if humans are willing to reconcile with mutants, mutants will never accept this kind of reconciliation. The war between the two groups is probably about to begin. After realizing this consequence, Professor X's first thought was to stop this secret execution. So soon, the X-Men were called over by Professor X. As soon as the matter was finished, the X-Men immediately exploded. The first to get angry was Cyclops. Although he was wearing glasses, anyone could tell from his expression that he was very angry. Professor, those humans are really crazy. How dare they do this? What did they think of us mutants? Pigs and dogs to be slaughtered at will. In my opinion, we should not only save people, but also teach those humans a lesson. Let them know that we mutants are not beasts to be slaughtered at will. Looking at the angry Cyclops, Professor X looked a little embarrassed. He wanted to stop this secret execution of mutants. But he never thought about launching a counterattack against humans. What if they fell out? What should they do? However, he couldn't refute Cyclops. Because of this matter, humans really had no bottom line. He, a good man, was embarrassed to speak for humans. Fortunately, Storm stood up. Scott, calm down. Things are not that bad yet. However, we must save those compatriots. We must not watch the bloodshed happen. But how to do it? I think we need to plan more. Storm's remarks are typical of smoothing things over. So Cyclops was still a little unhappy. But for the sake of his companions, he didn't say much in the end. He didn't say a word insulted by himself. At this time, Grey Jean, the Phoenix girl who had been thinking, spoke up. Everyone, I don't think this matter is that simple. If you really want to execute mutants secretly, why send them to Los Angeles? Grey Jean's words calmed everyone down. Even Professor X thought it made sense. But here comes the question. Why is that? Wolverine asked in confusion. He is good at fighting and killing, and he really doesn't understand this kind of brain-intensive things. Professor X, on the other hand, seemed to have thought of something. I recently discovered something. Charlotte the Destroyer is probably in Los Angeles. Maybe this time, they are targeting Charlotte. Hearing the name Charlotte, the X-Men members all changed color. They all had complicated feelings about Charlotte. On the one hand, they sympathized with Charlotte's experience. Being used as a consumable for human experiments, being disemboweled and so on. It was indeed too miserable. After experiencing such a thing, it was normal to turn evil. They could understand Charlotte emotionally and rationally. But on the other hand, they were somewhat hostile to Charlotte. Because Charlotte beat them up severely in Miami. They were beaten to the ground with their teeth. So much so that now, when they recalled it, they all felt a dull pain somewhere in their body. There was a psychological shadow. After a moment of silence, Professor X finally spoke up. No matter what conspiracy this matter has, we must take action. At least we have to ensure the safety of our fellow mutants. As for Charlotte, we can't do anything about him. That child is a bit too extreme. Professor X finally made a decision. Those mutants who were sent to Los Angeles and were about to be secretly executed must be saved. But as for Charlotte, let it go. 
The main reason is that Charlotte is too extreme. Professor X didn't know whether the birth of Charlotte was a good thing or a bad thing for the mutant community. After all, he was the culprit who caused the mutants to be targeted by the whole people. As for Professor X's decision, the X-Men didn't object. This is the best decision they can make from their position. On the other side, somewhere in America, after using some means to pry open the mouth of a middle and high-level military personnel and learn a lot of confidential information, Mystique Raven calmly left the room and joined the crowd on the street. She looked calm on the surface. But in fact, she was already thinking. Los Angeles, targeting the destroyer Charlotte. In that case, I really have to go and see. But I'm curious, if it's him, what would he choose to do? Thinking of Charlotte's style of doing things. Mystique felt that he would probably make a big fuss. In this case, Los Angeles had to go. She had a hunch that Los Angeles would soon have a lot of fun. As the person involved, Charlotte knew nothing about this. Every day, she would stay in the library and read books. Occasionally, when she was free, she would go to see Polaris. To see her progress. Perhaps it was because she trusted Charlotte too much. Polaris was extremely reluctant to read books. But when Charlotte found her with a bunch of books about magnetism, she still forced herself to be patient and read them carefully. And the effort did pay off. During this period of time, Polaris's control and application of magnetism were obviously much stronger. Although the level of magnetism did not change. However, the effect that could be exerted was improved by several levels. This also made Polaris admire Charlotte more and more. Even now, the way she looked at Charlotte began to look wrong. However, she concealed it well, and Charlotte did not think about it. So it has not been exposed for the time being. Once again, after taking food and books from Charlotte, Polaris couldn't help but tell Charlotte about another thing. Lord Charlotte, can I go out occasionally? Charlotte glanced at her when she heard this. Why, can't you help it? Polaris nodded. It's too boring here. As a mutant who has been hanging out on the streets since childhood, Polaris has always been used to being free. How could he stay in one place for so long without moving? He was already a little impatient. If he wasn't afraid of Charlotte getting angry, Polaris might have sneaked out to play. And now, he finally couldn't help but ask Charlotte about it. Charlotte thought about it and didn't object in the end. Okay, but you should be careful, and help me check the latest news, which will be useful to me. Hearing this, Polaris cheered excitedly. But he reacted quickly. He looked at Charlotte with excitement. Lord Charlotte, are you ready to take action? Charlotte nodded. He was indeed ready to take action. These days, on the one hand, he digested the results of the last Miami incident. On the other hand, he was also learning about vectors. Now, it has been almost quiet. It's time to move again. Do something. By the way, Letting Polaris go out to investigate is also meant to train her. A good confidant should be cultivated from childhood. After receiving Charlotte's order, Polaris was eager to go out. These days of seclusion life really made her feel suffocated. Now, she finally got a chance to have fun. And the first thing Polaris did after going out was to go to the underground mutant exchange center where she used to go. But here, it was empty. Almost all of her former friends were gone. Polaris had expected such a result. But after it really happened, she still felt a little sad. I don't know if there will be a chance to see those friends again in the future. When thinking of this, Polaris thought of that brother knee. If it weren't for that brother knee who betrayed everyone. How could everyone suffer such a heavy loss? No, I have to find a way to get revenge. Polaris is not the kind of person who swallows her losses. She has been hanging around the streets since she was a child, and she understands it deeply. The best way is to report the flaws. However, Polaris also knew. That brother Nee was either locked up in the military laboratory. Or he hid. It is not an easy thing to find him and take revenge. However, Polaris plans to try her luck. What if it works? Not to mention, Polaris is very lucky. Following the route of the brother Nee's activities, she searched for a circle. Soon, she found the figure of Brother Ni. Nee. However, in addition to this Brother Ni, nee, there are more than 30 military personnel lying in ambush around. Obviously, this Brother Ni nee has been used for fishing. 
The military wants to use this brother knee to catch as many mutants as possible. In the past, Polaris might have been fooled. However, Polaris at this time is no longer the same. If you want to catch her fish, you must be prepared to be eaten with bait and hook. Nije is a mutant. His real name is Pabo. He is a LV2 mutant who can control water. He usually relies on his racial talent to do some zero dollar shopping. He is good at speaking, so he has always been doing well in the mutant circle in Los Angeles. Until the Charlotte incident broke out. After the Charlotte incident, the situation of mutants took a sharp turn for the worse. Pabo was arrested by the military at that time. Facing the military's words and deeds to force him to confess, Pabo finally couldn't hold on and became a traitor. Not only did he cooperate with the military, but he also sold out all his mutant friends. Even Polaris was sold out by him. Although it hurts to betray his compatriots. However, the military has money and really gives it. In addition, there are military people to protect him. Pabo gradually fell in love with being a traitor. Using the lives of his compatriots to exchange for wealth. For him, he really doesn't mind at all. He has no conscience. Even, in order to make more money. Pabo took the initiative to suggest that he be the bait. See if he can catch more fish. Today, he is wandering around the street as usual. Looking forward to meeting a former, buddy. In this way, the sports car he has set his sights on will be settled. But soon, Pabo's face suddenly changed. Good news, he saw his former friend again. Bad news, the most ferocious one. Looking at the figure with a black hood standing at the end of the street. Pabo was stunned for a moment, and then turned around and ran without thinking. If it was other mutants, Pabo still had confidence and could fool them. But facing Polaris, he didn't even dare to say a word. He just wanted to escape. However, how could Polaris let him go? Still want to run. Looking at Pabo who turned and ran away, Polaris sneered. Then he moved his fingers, and a piece of iron on the side flew across Pabo's body at a very fast speed. This time, Pabo's life was not taken. But his tendons were directly cut off. Pabo was directly paralyzed. Pabo also fell to the ground. Watching Polaris's figure approaching, Pabo's first reaction was to cry for help. Help, this mutant madman wants to kill me. Also, she is Polaris, she is Magneto's daughter. Kill her, kill her so that we can continue to live. Faced with Pabo's call for help, the military personnel who were ambushing around immediately moved out. Of course, there were also a few smart ones who had already started retreat. Perhaps they have not heard of Polaris's name. However, they must have heard of Magneto's name. Who dares to fight Magneto's daughter in a street fight? All around is metal. If you rush forward, you will definitely be killed. With only a few dollars a month, why are you risking your life? Polaris simply ignored the military personnel around him. Keep approaching Pabo. Soon, the military personnel around him opened fire. But when they saw that the bullets stopped in front of Polaris, they realized the seriousness of the matter. As the sound of bullets piercing the skull continued to sound. One body after another fell to the ground helplessly. Polaris has also come to Pabo. Why? Why betray everyone? Looking at Pabo, who is crawling on the ground like a dog. Polaris was really angry. In the past, she treated Pabo as a brother. But this good brother turned around and sold her out. Traitor, he really deserves to die. And Pabo, facing Polaris's questioning, was about to cry. Don't, don't kill me. I was forced to do it, I had no choice. Those military people said they would send me to the test bench, I don't want to die, I don't want to be disemboweled. Facing Pabo's sophistry, Polaris was furious. You don't want to, you don't want to, so you sent all your compatriots up there, right? It's because of guys like you that our fellow mutants are persecuted again and again. You deserve to die. Pabo was almost scared to death. He didn't have the courage to refute Polaris. All she could do was beg for mercy. Don't kill me, really don't kill me, I, I can give you an important piece of information. Recently, the military is preparing a big plan to deal with the destroyer Charlotte. Charlotte is in Los Angeles, and the military has set up a trap waiting for him. Hearing this, Polaris was stunned for a moment. Then she was worried. At the same time, she had made up her mind to tell Charlotte this news. But before that, she still had one thing to do. That was the traitor Pabo. 
You deserve to die. Kill the traitor Pavo cleanly. And the military personnel around. Polaris adjusted his hat. Then he quickly disappeared into the shadows. After asking for the surveillance, Polaris did not dare to stay. He ran quickly towards his residence. After returning to a safe place, she contacted Charlotte as soon as possible and told him the news she had received. After listening to Polaris's news, Charlotte frowned slightly. But soon, he relaxed. I know about this matter, don't worry, I will take care of it. As for being targeted again, Charlotte really didn't know. However, even if he knew now, Charlotte would not be too worried. With his current strength, he was exaggerating. Even the ultimate weapon of mankind has no good way to deal with him. Unless he was directly bombed by the center of nuclear weapons. Otherwise, human technological weapons are a joke to him. In this situation, why should he panic? It should be humans who should panic. However, Charlotte was not too arrogant. He still had to find out what he should know. Otherwise, there was a possibility of failure. LV4, not LV5. When he reached LV5, he could just hang out. Thinking of this, Charlotte quickly left the house. I heard that you guys have the best news here. Hell Axe Bar. Charlotte leaned against the bar and asked the bartender. The white bartender glanced at him and said calmly, it depends on what price you can offer. This bar looks like a place to drink and pick up girls. But in fact, it is the largest underground information trading point in Los Angeles. It is said that as long as you have money, you can find out any information. Even if you want to know the color of the commander-in-chief's pants today. You can find out in minutes. But the premise is that you have to have money. And what Charlotte lacks the most is money. Relying on powerful computing power. Charlotte has countless ways to make money. The so-called money is really just a number to him. Looking at the greedy bartender, Charlotte took out a check and filled in a string of numbers. Looking at the numbers on the check, greed flashed in the bartender's eyes. However, he did not put the check away immediately, but asked Charlotte, Tell me, man, what do you want to know? Charlotte did not keep it a secret. What's the news about the mutant world recently? Hearing this, the bartender's eyes changed immediately. Became clear. Then, gritted his teeth, the bartender said, If you want to know about this, then this money is not enough. Charlotte did not hesitate and immediately added another zero to the check. This time, there is no problem. Hey, here's the latest news. It is said that the military is planning to secretly execute some mutants. The execution site is at a military base at the foot of the Rocky Mountains. After receiving this news, Charlotte did not stop. He turned around and left. Not long after Charlotte left, another bartender came up. Just let him go. This is a big fat sheep. How about I take someone to get him here? As an organization that relies on the underground world. How could these people really only sell intelligence? If conditions permit, they can also do some unscrupulous things. However, as soon as he finished speaking, the bartender was slapped on the forehead. What nonsense are you talking about? If you want to die, don't take me with you. He can take out so much money and inquire about the news of mutants. Who do you think he is? You go to rob him. We're lucky if he doesn't rob us. Hearing this, the other bartender also sobered up. A trace of fear flashed in his eyes. Then it turned into disgust. Freak, it's better to die quickly. But before you die, it would be better if you can give me the money. Of course, this is just a complaint behind his back. Really in front of him, I still dare not say it. Those who understand the cruelty of mutants understand. I didn't understand it before. After Charlotte made a big move in Miami, he should understand it. On the other side, after leaving the bar, Charlotte returned to his residence. Then, he thought about the whole thing carefully. Secretly execute mutants. American officials have not yet been overthrown. Is that the extent of it? Quote. If this is really done, doesn't it mean that we are completely at war with mutants? Although the status of mutants in America is very low. But there is a premise, that is, mutants can still survive and have a way to survive. Once there is no way to survive, then, those mutants will turn into time bombs in a minute. Unless the current commander-in-chief does not intend to do it. Otherwise, it is impossible to issue such a decree. It will really be a big deal. But, on the other hand, 
as long as it is not an official order to execute mutants. Then everything has room for maneuver. Secret information, it is naturally possible to be false. If necessary, even if it is true, it can be said to be false. At worst, when the time comes, push a few scapegoats. Just take the blame. Step back a few steps from the mutants and make up for it. Isn't this storm over? I can only say that those who can get involved in politics have dirty hearts. In Charlotte's view, this news of, secretly executing mutants. It doesn't seem like a declaration of war on mutants. It's more like fishing for his fish. Rather than saying that this news angered the mutants. It's better to say that this news is designed to lure him into the trap. Because Charlotte's personality is destined, he can't stand by and watch the mutants die. Otherwise, his reputation will immediately collapse among the mutant community. He will become a being that everyone wants to beat. At that time, don't even mention the fear value. There will be plenty of contempt values. But, just relying on these, as if to deal with me, isn't it a bit too easy for me? Quote. Charlotte sneered. It is undeniable. This time, the, secret execution of mutants, is a conspiracy. No matter what choice Charlotte makes, he will be at a disadvantage. However, no matter how powerful the conspiracy is, in front of absolute strength. It is just a mirage. Relying on the level 4 vector operation. Charlotte can completely push it through at that time. What conspiracy is useless in front of absolute strength? It's just right, I can still plan it. Take advantage of this opportunity to do something big. I hope that the fear value will be more in the future. Charlotte thought to himself. I am already thinking about how I will appear in the next big show. Relying on money. Charlotte bought a lot of information. After a rough statistics. Charlotte can basically be sure. The so-called, secret execution, is a conspiracy against himself. The purpose is to lure him out. What is more curious is. Where did the military get the confidence to lure him out and kill him? But think about it. The military didn't know that Charlotte had a system. It's even more impossible to think that he would become stronger so quickly. If it depends only on Charlotte's ability in the Miami incident. Then there is really a chance to kill Charlotte. However, with Charlotte's current level 4 strength. The military's plan is likely to be in vain. Even if it is in vain. How to squeeze the benefits of this time as much as possible, you still need to plan more. Finally, there is such a stage to show your power in front of people. How can Charlotte waste it in vain? Since there is profit, then eat as much as possible. With this idea, Charlotte called Polaris over. Lord Charlotte, is there anything you want me to do? Charlotte nodded. Very satisfied with Polaris's current attitude. This is a good cow and horse, ahem, a good employee. Are you familiar with the area around Los Angeles? Polaris nodded. Very familiar. I grew up here and have been to many places. Then, what about the military bases around? This question made Polaris a little bit at a loss. I don't know much about this. But give me some time, I'll go and find out now. It's normal for Polaris not to know. Who would ask about the underground bases for serious mutants? That's a bad place. As for asking Polaris to investigate now. Forget it. With Polaris's impetuous style, he hasn't found out anything yet. It was discovered by the military first. Let me find out. As for you, I hope you can gather as many mutants as possible during this period. I have something important for you to do. Upon hearing this, Polaris nodded quickly. Don't worry, I will definitely get this done. At the same time, Polaris was excited. Finally, finally. She, Polaris, finally started to do big things. Looking at Polaris who was expecting, Charlotte smiled in her heart. What a silly child. I hope you can still be so calm after you know what to do. Polaris has a strong ability to act. She also has good connections. Not long after, she gathered people and brought these mutants to a warehouse in Los Angeles to meet up with Charlotte. Perhaps it was because Polaris had already told Charlotte's identity before coming. Leading to these mutants. Everyone looked at Charlotte with admiration and fear. Admiration is for what Charlotte did. From the perspective of humans, he is a demon. From the perspective of mutants, he is a hero. And fear is because of Charlotte's strength. Fear of the strong is an instinctive reaction of living things. Mutants are no exception. Charlotte didn't care too much. 
After simply dealing with these mutants. Then he started to talk about business. I have a plan, a plan to take revenge on humans. I don't know if you dare to do it. As soon as the voice fell, Polaris stood up excitedly. Lord Charlotte, just say it, as long as it can take revenge on humans, we will definitely do it. Polaris, words were echoed by all mutants. It's not that Charlotte's appeal is really that strong. But these mutants hate humans too much. Humans' persecution of mutants is really more cruel than the persecution of black people. Many mutants were missing limbs at this time. It was all caused by humans. Seeing this, Charlotte nodded with satisfaction. Okay, then I'll give you a task. I need you to attack a military base west of the Rocky Mountains in three days. And transport the nuclear bombs in the military base to Los Angeles. Hearing this, the expressions of those originally fanatical mutants froze. Looking at Charlotte's eyes, it was like looking at a madman. Ah, nuclear bombs. Is it true? That's right. These mutants hate humans very much. That's right. These mutants all want to take revenge on humans. But in the minds of these mutants, at most, they would just attack or create some terrorist incidents. But I never thought of using nuclear bombs. This, this is really too outrageous. Which mutant is doing something and playing with nuclear bombs? Oh, there really is one. But the last one who played with nuclear bombs has now grown into a tree on his grave. Looking at the dumbfounded eyes of the mutants, Charlotte said with some dissatisfaction, What? Are you afraid? You dare not. Fellows, think about how those humans treat us. Can't we retaliate now? Humans can secretly execute our mutant brothers, can't we just destroy their cities? Looking at Charlotte with a look of disdain. Many mutants couldn't help swallowing their saliva. Although they all understood the truth. However, they still felt that Charlotte was a bit too extreme. That was a nuclear bomb. If he really did that, it would mean a complete break with humans. You can imagine it with your feet. Afterwards, they will definitely face crazy revenge from humans. Did they really have to play so big? Just when many mutants hesitated. It was her again, and Polaris again. She stood up and shouted, Lord Charlotte is right. Since humans dare to persecute us, we must also retaliate against them. It's just a nuclear bomb, what's the big deal? We will overthrow the tyranny of humans and control the whole world in the future. Just treat this action as a beginning, the beginning of our mutants' journey to glory. Looking at Polaris with a fanatical face. In Charlotte's heart, he also silently complained. This girl, why does she feel more extreme than herself? However, it must be said that Polaris's emotional rendering is very accurate. Influenced by her, many mutants also gave it their all. Polaris is right. We have been bullied to this extent by humans. What's wrong with revenge? Yes, I did it. I'm not a coward. Count me in. I have always felt that America is too urbanized. Then I will come too. I will seek revenge for my broken arm. I will go too. I have never done such a big thing in my life. Led by Polaris. More and more mutants chose to join. And Raven, the magic girl who mixed in the mutant group. Sighed helplessly. With Mystique's ability, it was easy to blend into the mutants. So, she also participated in this rally. Then, at this rally, she heard this earth-shaking news. To be honest, Mystique felt that Charlotte was a little too extreme. Using nuclear bombs to destroy human cities. God, this is something that even Magneto didn't dare to do. As a result, Charlotte planned to do it. This is too extreme. What made Mystique even more headache was that under the influence of Charlotte, those mutants also became extreme. They really didn't know how big the impact of nuclear bombs would be. Nuclear bombs are the bottom line of human beings without a doubt. Once this bottom line is touched, human beings will retaliate at all costs. At that time, it will really be a fight to the death and an all-out war. More importantly, you should at least talk about such a big plan in a more confidential place. In front of so many people, saying such things. Are you afraid that it will not attract the attention of humans? Do you really think that there are no human traitors among these mutants? Of course, there are. Charlotte is fully aware of this. However, this is all within Charlotte's plan. First of all, Charlotte is not a madman. He will not really do such a thing as bombing a city with a nuclear bomb. Again, killing is just a means, not an end. His purpose is just to harvest more fear points. 
Based on this premise, Charlotte will choose to kill. Rather than killing for the sake of killing. Therefore, he will not use nuclear bombs directly unless it is absolutely necessary. Even if the nuclear bomb kills more people. The fear points that Charlotte can obtain will be less, right? Humans are such good fear points. How could Charlotte really exterminate them? Secondly, Charlotte is not a fool. Would he not know that a nuclear bomb needs a special procedure to be detonated? If he really stole a nuclear bomb, it would not be detonated without the procedure. At most, it would be leaked and used as a pollution source. You can't treat a nuclear bomb as a firecracker and just explode it if you throw it. It is precisely because of the above two reasons. From the beginning, Charlotte's plan was just to use the nuclear bomb as a cover. The purpose is naturally to tell humans. He has this idea and the ability. It doesn't matter whether he does it or not. It is very important to have this ability. As long as Charlotte shows that he has the ability to take away the nuclear bomb at any time. Then, humans will be like hanging a sword of Damocles. They will be afraid of him all the time. This is the effect Charlotte wants. As for the inner ghost among the mutants. Charlotte doesn't care. He doesn't care if the news is leaked. Even if humans set up a dragnet at that time. Charlotte still doesn't care. On the contrary, this is the effect he wants. The tighter the human defense, the more thorough the preparation. When Charlotte breaks through, the impact will be stronger. Only then will more people know. What is fear? So, in the final analysis. This rally is not a secret conspiracy. It is an open conspiracy to declare war. Didn't the military use, secret executions, to catch Charlotte's fish? Then Charlotte did the opposite. Use nuclear bombs to catch human fish. At that time, it depends on the fisherman over there, who has more powerful means and can laugh last. After a period of time, Charlotte pretended to make a plan. Then let these mutants go down to prepare. After most of the mutants left, Charlotte called Polaris and prepared to leave. At this time, Mystique also followed. Charlotte, don't you think your plan is too frivolous? Mystique couldn't help but said to Charlotte. Charlotte turned around and looked at the, middle-aged strong man, who followed her. She couldn't help but asked back, are you questioning me? Polaris also showed hostile eyes at the right time. As long as Mystique didn't answer well. She would make Mystique look bad in a minute. Facing the hostility of Charlotte and Polaris. Mystique decisively disarmed herself. Revealing herself, with her iconic blue skin. Now, can I question you? Mystique Raven even in the entire mutant community, has considerable prestige. She is not only the founding veteran of the X-Men. She is also one of the founders of the Brotherhood of Mutants. It can be said that mutants two major factions in the group. Both have a deep relationship with her. In addition, she has rescued countless mutants over the years. Assassinated countless, enemies, who suspected and malicious towards mutants. A series of actions made Mystique a totem in the eyes of mutants. With her status, she is certainly qualified to question Charlotte. Even Polaris, who is very fanatical about Charlotte. At this time, she put away her hostility. There was a hint of admiration in her eyes. Please, this is Mystique. The famous Mystique. Charlotte didn't expect it. It turned out to be Mystique who came. However, it was not too surprising. After all, with what he did, it was normal to attract the attention of Magneto. As for Mystique's doubts about herself, Charlotte didn't care. His so-called, nuclearization of Los Angeles, plan is just a trick to fool ordinary people. He can't fool Mystique at all. It would be strange if Mystique really believed his lies and fooled her. Considering Mystique's super high prestige in the mutant community, Charlotte felt that she still had to explain it to her. Otherwise, Mystique would stand up and raise her arms. Charlotte's plan ended before it even started. Senior Mystique, are you interested in chatting alone? Mystique frowned a little unhappy. Senior. You are the senior. I'm only 18 years and 1000 months old. Call me sister. However, Mystique finally decided to have a chat with Charlotte, the rude mutant kid. Tell me, what are you thinking? How can you come up with such a stupid plan? Charlotte couldn't help rolling her eyes. Although it is indeed stupid, there is no need to say it so bluntly. Don't I want to save face? I understand what you said, and I also know that it is unrealistic to nuke Los Angeles. But I have my own plan. 
Mystique was a little surprised by this answer. She almost thought that Charlotte was really a reckless man just now. Now it seems that there is another hidden story. What plan? Charlotte stopped talking. Just looking at Mystique, making Mystique a little embarrassed. Yes, it was the first time she and Charlotte met. Why should she tell the plan out loud? But it's enough. Since she knows that Charlotte is not a fool. Then there is no need for Mystique to stop it. Let's just see what tricks Charlotte can play. Nuclearize Los Angeles. Oh, it's really audacious and unrealistic. Does he think that nuclear bombs are so easy to be hijacked? General Trask, threw the traitor among the mutants. Soon learned of Charlotte's, stupid, plan. He immediately laughed with some disdain. Really, it's nonsense. He thought that Charlotte was a tough opponent before. The result is this. He is simply a brainless idiot. Then General, what should we do? Should we take action in advance or? The adjutant asked General Trask. After thinking about it, General Trask gave the answer. No hurry, play with him. Since he wants to play, then play with him to his heart's content. By the way, by the way, change the time of the secret execution to three days later. I want to see what he chooses then. On one side, the mutants are secretly executed. On the other side, it is to nuke Los Angeles. Let's see what Charlotte chooses. After a pause, General Trask continued, for safety reasons, the nuclear bombs in the base should be moved away. Although it is unlikely, what if it happens? It would be too troublesome if the nuclear bombs really fell into his hands. Although General Trask looked down on Charlotte's IQ. However, he still respected Charlotte's strength. There is no way, vector operation is too unsolvable. There is no way to fight against it. You can only play it safe first. At the same time, General Trask was also ruthless. This time, no matter what Charlotte chooses, Charlotte must be completely killed. Even if the supernatural power of vector operation is not needed, Charlotte must not be allowed to live. This person is too dangerous, and General Trask is afraid of him. Okay, then I will go down and make arrangements now. After that, the adjutant left. General Trask was left alone, looking at Charlotte's portrait and sneered. Three days passed in a flash. In a blink of an eye, it was the day of the operation. At this time, Charlotte no longer needed to hide her identity. She directly revealed her original appearance. However, her hair color did not change, it was still silver white. This was also Charlotte's basic hair color after reaching level 4. Next, the operation on the nuclear bomb side will be handed over to you to command. I will rescue those compatriots as soon as possible, and then meet up with you. Be careful. Before leaving, Charlotte reminded Polaris. Polaris was a little nervous, but more excited. When she thought that after tomorrow, the whole world would know her name, Polaris. She was so excited. Don't worry, Lord Charlotte, I will definitely get it done. Looking at the back of Polaris leaving excitedly. Charlotte shook her head. How could the heroic Magneto give birth to such a stupid daughter? And Mystique also looked at Charlotte deeply. I'll wait and see what tricks you can come up with for me. Don't let me down, little guy. After saying that, Mystique followed Polaris and left meaningfully. Charlotte was speechless. How did he offend this senior? Forget it, it doesn't matter. Women and the like will only affect the speed of his sword drawing. Let's focus on work. In the north corner of Los Angeles. In a secret military base. Nearly 500 mutants were secretly transported here from all over the country. They were all prepared to be secretly executed today. Outside the military base, the X-Men were ready to break in. Go ahead, we can't wait any longer. Otherwise, the situation of our compatriots will be very dangerous. Scott, who had a hot temper, couldn't help but say. However, the calm Dr. Beast shook his head. Don't worry, wait a little longer. Don't forget, this is a trap, a trap used to deal with the destroyer Charlotte. If we jump out now, we will only become targets. The best way is to wait for Charlotte to appear, and while he is fighting with military personnel, we will set off again. After Dr. Beast finished speaking, Grey Jean nodded immediately. Hank is right, we can't be the first to stand out. Otherwise, we will be the ones who will be in trouble. After hearing the two people's dissuasion, Scott barely suppressed the impulse in his heart. But he was still a little irritable. Is that destroyer Charlotte coming or not? 
If he doesn't come, it will be too late. Stop making noise, I'm coming. Wolverine has with a sharp instinct like a wild animal. Even though he hadn't seen anyone yet, he still spoke to everyone immediately. As expected. In the next moment, Charlotte fell from the sky and landed at the entrance of the military base. The whole person, in an arrogant manner, was suspended in the air. After taking out his mobile phone and sending a message to Polaris, Charlotte crushed the phone completely. Then, a huge vector gushed out. The huge steel forge door was completely torn into a pile of scrap metal. The material science that humans are proud of has no meaning in front of Charlotte. However, at the moment the door was torn, countless metal storms swept in. Among the countless bullets, there were also many types of bombs and chemical weapons. Obviously, in order to welcome Charlotte's arrival, the military headed by General Trask had already made sufficient preparations. It's a bit funny. Facing the fierce metal storm, Charlotte said disdainfully. Then he waved his hand. Countless metal storms turned and swept back, accompanied by explosions and screams. The first line of defense of the entire underground base was completely torn apart by Charlotte. While Charlotte was killing people. On the other side, Polaris and the others also brought a group of mutants. Came to the underground base where nuclear weapons were stored. Just when Polaris wanted to lead the mutants to attack the underground base. Suddenly, her cell phone rang. Took it out and saw that it was a text message from Charlotte. There was only one sentence on it. There is a traitor, the operation is cancelled. Seeing this sentence, Polaris was stunned, and then a huge rage gushed out. Turning back, he fiercely glanced at the mutants behind him. Just by looking, it is really hard to tell who is the traitor. The most angrily said, the operation is cancelled, let's go back. Although Polaris was reckless, she was not a fool. Knowing that there was a traitor in the team, how could she not know that they had been calculated? If they rushed forward, they would be caught in a net. This is not called bravery. This is called stupidity. So, although she was very unwilling in her heart. However, Polaris still retreated with her mutants. And in the retreating team, Mystique laughed quietly. It seems that Charlotte really has a backup plan. Polaris and the others came and left quickly. On the other side, Charlotte, the uninvited guest, was not so easy to deal with. After easily tearing open the first line of defense of this underground base, Charlotte rushed in arrogantly. Who cares how many lines of defense there are? Isn't it enough to tear them all apart? Soon, Charlotte encountered the second line of defense. Accompanied by a series of bomb explosions, the entire ceiling was blown down directly. Because half of this base is embedded in the mountain, countless rubble fell at this moment. In short, Charlotte at this time is equivalent to facing a mountain pressing on himself. However, this degree still can't stop Charlotte. Vector operation broke out, and the mountain that was about to collapse was immediately controlled. Then, under Charlotte's mind, countless pieces of rubble were piled together to form more than ten huge stone pillars. They supported the weight of the entire mountain. Although this load-bearing pillar was not very stable, it might collapse tomorrow. But at least it was enough for today. After solving the second line of defense, Charlotte continued to go deeper. This time, countless oxygen was suddenly sucked away. How to deal with an opponent like Charlotte who has no blind spots? General Trask came up with the idea of environmental killing. Using a very short time to suck out all the oxygen. To suffocate Charlotte to death. I have to say, it's quite creative. But unfortunately, Charlotte had already prepared for this move. As the person involved in the vector operation, he knew the weakness of this ability too well. So, in Charlotte's vector shield, always keep a certain amount of oxygen for yourself to breathe. Maybe this oxygen can't last too long. However, it is still okay to give Charlotte an hour or two to operate. And it won't take that long. A huge amount of vectors were activated, turning into two invisible giant palms. It was like a giant god descending to the earth. In an instant, the steel wall that was at least four meters thick was torn apart. As the steel wall was torn apart, the oxygen that was originally extracted circulated back again. And Charlotte also went deeper along this gap. The fourth. The fifth. The sixth. As the lines of defense were torn apart one by one. Charlotte was getting closer and closer to the core area of the underground base. 
In the distance, in a hidden combat command room. General Trask listened to the continuous battle reports. His mood gradually sank to the bottom. Surprisingly, so fast. He has evolved again. General Trask thought angrily. The defense line he built had already anticipated Charlotte's growth in advance. According to common sense, even if these lines of defense cannot destroy Charlotte, at least they should hold him back for a long time. Consume his strength as much as possible. But what is the result? It was easily torn apart. There is only one possible explanation for this. That is, Charlotte has evolved again. From the original LV-3, it has reached LV-4. This is also what General Trask is most afraid of now. With such an evolutionary speed, coupled with the unsolvable vector operation. How to win against such an opponent? How to fight? There is no chance at all. However, although he was very uneasy. However, General Trask has not despaired. He thinks there is still a chance. Even if the plan here fails, I still have a backup plan. You can dodge the first time, but you can't dodge the second time. With expectation, General Trask continued to watch the battle report. In the underground base, Charlotte will kill gods and Buddhas. Relying on the powerful vector, no matter what is in front of him, it will be violently crushed. He passed all the way and directly broke through the nine lines of defense. I have to say that General Trask is really hardworking. He actually arranged such a big gift for him in such a short time. It was also thanks to Charlotte that he had reached the level 4. Otherwise, if it was only LV3, it would really be a disaster. But unfortunately, there is no if. This should be the last line of defense. After breaking through here, you can see those mutant compatriots. I just don't know how many compatriots will be mixed with water. With a sneer, Charlotte did not stop. The vector operation burst out, turned into a sharp blade, and cut off the thick metal door in front. Accompanied by a loud noise that made people ache. The steel door was directly twisted and torn, and Charlotte also flew in through the gap. Inside, it was a huge square. On the square, there were more than 500 mutants tied up and locked. At the same time, every mutant had a collar tied around his neck. There was a small screen on the collar, which was full of timers. Lord Charlotte, save us, we have bombs on our necks. Lord Charlotte, I don't want to die, please save us. Lord Charlotte, as long as you can save me, I am willing to follow you to the death in the future. The moment they saw Charlotte, the mutants below were like seeing God. Each one was so sincere. And Charlotte seemed to be unaware of the danger. He floated down with a smile. My compatriots, don't worry, you will definitely be fine as long as I am here. After saying that, Charlotte fell into the crowd. Then the next moment, dozens of mutants suddenly jumped up. All kinds of mutant abilities were directed at Charlotte. Hound. Mutants who had been completely brainwashed and turned into tools. Charlotte had expected these attacks. He sneered. Vector operation was launched. All attacks were deflected in an instant. In the blink of an eye, all the mutants who suddenly attacked were killed on the spot. Then, the sound of clicking continued. The bomb collars on the mutants, necks were destroyed in an instant. A crisis was resolved. Okay, it's okay, you are all safe. With a kind smile, Charlotte came to a mutant to comfort him. But the next moment, the mutant's originally grateful expression changed. Instead, it was completely crazy. Let's die together, fool guy. With a roar, the mutant supported his hands on Charlotte's vector shield. The next moment, a strange force was activated. It seemed to pull Charlotte to another place. However, even after this ability was activated for a long time, it had no effect. Space transfer. It is indeed a very good ability. Let me guess, where do you want to transfer me to? Deep in the center of the earth. Deep in the sea. Or in space. If you can do it successfully, you can indeed kill me. But sorry, space is also a vector. This space transfer ability user is the real killer. Those hounds that suddenly attacked before. They were just cannon fodder to create opportunities for him. But even so, it was useless. Vector operation is so perverted. After getting rid of this space ability user. The next thing was much simpler. Charlotte helped these mutants regain their freedom one by one. Just at this time, the X-Men also followed in. When they saw Charlotte, the X-Men were obviously on guard. 
Obviously, the beating Charlotte gave them before. They still remembered it vividly. The good news is that Charlotte now has no intention of beating them up. These compatriots are in your hands. I have other things to do. Without paying too much attention to the X-Men's vigilance. After Charlotte explained. Directly used the huge vector to tear open a passage directly to the ground. Then, in front of everyone, he flew up directly. Looking at this scene. The X-Men all had complicated expressions. They couldn't understand Charlotte. Say Charlotte well. He killed a lot of people in Miami before, and beat them up at the same time. It's not good to say that Charlotte is bad, but he really saved a lot of mutants. This led to the X-Men's particularly complicated feelings about Charlotte. And this is also the real side of this world. Nothing is absolute. The same goes for standpoints. If you look at a person from different standpoints, the conclusions you draw will be completely different. His enemy is my hero. That's the truth. At the same time, General Trask sighed. His trusted adjutant said with some fear, General, I just got the news. The defense line has been torn apart, and Charlotte has left. Hearing this news, even though he had expected it, General Trask couldn't help but slap the table. He was really angry. What Charlotte did was no less than slapping him in the face. No matter how well you plan, you can only be a clown in front of absolute strength. But soon, General Trask calmed down again. No, it shouldn't be over yet. I always feel that there will be a sequel. He will definitely go to the nuclear weapons. It turns out that this is true. After leaving the military base where the mutants were imprisoned, Charlotte recognized the direction. Then he flew directly to the underground base where the nuclear weapons were stored. When Charlotte arrived, many journalists' vehicles and live helicopters had already arrived here. These, of course, were notified by Charlotte. And this is also Charlotte's real purpose. He undoubtedly threw nuclear weapons directly and completely broke off relations with humans. Provoked a terrible racial war. All he needed was to show the world an attitude. He had the ability and the idea to create a hell for humans. He also wanted everyone to realize that. This hell could fall on their heads at any time. Only in this way would people in other places be afraid of Charlotte. Only in this way would they be afraid of him. Instead of hating him after overdoing it. Fear and hatred are two completely different emotions. Charlotte can certainly tell the difference. Dear viewers, welcome to the live broadcast. I am now at the foot of the Rocky Mountains. According to the intelligence we have obtained, the notorious destroyer Charlotte is planning to attack a military base here. And what's worse is that deep inside this military base, there are 37 nuclear bombs. Charlotte the destroyer's real purpose is likely to be these dangerous nuclear bombs. We have no way of guessing what Charlotte the destroyer is going to do with these nuclear bombs, but I hope our soldiers can stop him at all costs, otherwise it would be too terrible. As the reporters broadcast live, people all over the world know about this. They have also seen Charlotte's madness. Even the most courageous people can't help but feel a sense of fear towards Charlotte at this time. They are afraid that they will wake up that day. Two, suns, appeared in the sky. The radiation light is really the ultimate fear of human beings now. And there are more discussions about this on the internet. Oh my god, this mutant is really crazy. God, please send angels to stop him, otherwise the world will be destroyed. Using nuclear weapons to attack humans, this is the craziest mutant I have ever seen. Compared with the destroyer Charlotte, Magneto looks kind. No matter who it is, please come and kill this monster Charlotte. His existence is a huge threat to the whole world. For ordinary humans, Charlotte is definitely the most frightening mutant, no doubt about it. Although Magneto is also cruel. However, Magneto has a bottom line. Charlotte, on the other hand, shows absolute madness and violence. Not to mention the Miami incident, the number of casualties reached more than 4,000. And now, if Charlotte really gets the nuclear bomb, then how many casualties will there be? Hundreds of thousands. Or millions. Who dares to guarantee that he is not one of these millions? It can be said that at this moment, Charlotte alone has attracted the hatred of the whole world. However, this is the effect that Charlotte wants. If not, he would not have planned to do so. Next, it's a good performance. I am very satisfied with this stage. Feeling the increasing fear value. Charlotte showed a sneer at the corner of his mouth. 
Then, no longer hesitated. He approached the military base directly. It was the same old trick. All kinds of metal storms focused their fire. But such an attack was simply a gift to Charlotte. Under vector operation, all kinetic weapons lost their effect. On the contrary, they would even help Charlotte. In front of the whole world. Charlotte crushed the confidence of all mankind with a suspenseless crushing. Guns and cannons were useless, but they became the sword in Charlotte's hand. Bombs were useless, and the kinetic energy could not be transmitted to Charlotte at all. Instead, they became Charlotte's battering ram. Even the most advanced electromagnetic cannons lost their effect when facing Charlotte. Electromagnetism became Charlotte's toy directly. It hit wherever it was pointed, and the destructive power was terrifying. When all these technological weapons were useless. For Charlotte, the entire military base was just a sand fortress. There was no protection at all. In a few minutes, it was completely torn apart by Charlotte's hands. This military base, which was originally highly confidential, was completely torn open from its mysterious shell under Charlotte's vector operation. All the secrets inside were revealed to the world. It also announced a message to everyone in the world. Charlotte definitely had the ability to obtain nuclear bombs at any time. Nuclear weapons. The most powerful weapon of mankind today. It is also the ultimate confidence of mankind to be proud of mutants. Under the deterrence of nuclear bombs. Only humans can be superior to mutants. Only then can powerful mutants like Magneto not dare to make trouble easily. But now, what Charlotte did. Without a doubt, it directly eliminated the ultimate sword of mankind. He told all mankind with his actual actions. Nuclear weapons can be used to deter mutants. It can also be used to deter humans themselves. The same sentence. I can have a sword but not use it, but I can't be without a sword. What Charlotte is doing now is to prove it to everyone. If he wants, he can get the sword at any time. This alone is enough to make Charlotte the ultimate fear of all mankind. Therefore, Charlotte's fear value has skyrocketed in a very short time. It reached an exaggerated level in a matter of minutes. And this is even just the beginning. On the internet, those netizens who originally scolded and cursed Charlotte. All dared not to shout anymore. They all changed their statements. It's too exaggerated. It's really one person against a country. Using nuclear weapons to threaten humanity itself, I have to say, this is a black joke. Fortunately, the military moved all the nuclear bombs away in advance, otherwise, the consequences would be disastrous. Charlotte is so powerful. I declare that from now on, Charlotte is my god. By the way, is there any way to turn me into a mutant? I also want to do whatever I want like Charlotte. After showing absolute strength, Charlotte's reputation was directly reversed. Before, many people said that Charlotte was a lunatic and should be executed immediately. But now, many people regard Charlotte as the incarnation of God. This is the benefit brought by strength. The strong do not accept criticism. This is a thought engraved in the bones of almost all creatures. After entering the pass, there will be great scholars to debate for me. That's the truth. After doing all this, Charlotte has not stopped completely. Instead, he looked at the reporters around him again. Without hesitation, Charlotte waved directly at these reporters. The next moment, countless vectors burst out. Send all these reporters to see God. They have made themselves into ruthless people. How can they not carry it through to the end? Moreover, how many good people can there be in those who study journalism? Killing them all may be a bit extreme, but killing 9 out of 10 will definitely leave out some. In this case, Charlotte was too lazy to distinguish. It's better to kill them all. So far, Charlotte's entire plan has come to a complete end. When Charlotte was about to meet up with Polaris and the others. Far away, in the military base. General Trask finally figured out Charlotte's plan. I was fooled by him. He is much more cunning than I thought. His purpose is not to use nuclear weapons to destroy the world, but to demonstrate to us humans. Mutant kid, how can he be so dirty? Before, General Trask thought that Charlotte was a fool. Because only fools would think of going out to grab nuclear bombs. But now, when Charlotte's work is done, when General Trask calmed down and analyzed, he finally figured it out. Charlotte's purpose is not for any nuclear bombs at all, but to show that he has the strength to get nuclear bombs at any time. 
This is the most important thing. Only by showing off your muscles can you gain respect, awe, and fear. And if Charlotte really takes out nuclear bombs and throws them around on the land of America. Of course, it will cause huge losses to America. But at the same time, it will also unite America in minutes. By then, Charlotte may be fine. But the hunting of mutants in various places will no longer be stopped. It may even cause the two races to fight to the death. Even Charlotte dare not bear such a responsibility. He thought that it meant cutting himself off from the mutant community. Even if Charlotte is a mutant hero. After the nuclear bomb is really dropped. His reputation in the mutant circle will definitely plummet. The gains will be far less than now. Unfortunately, General Trask knew it too late. If he had figured it out earlier, he could have used nuclear weapons openly. Stay in this military base. If Charlotte takes it away, then take it away. Charlotte is most likely not to throw it away anyway. Even, by then, it will be Charlotte himself who will be held up. If Charlotte doesn't throw away the nuclear bomb, Charlotte will break his promise. If Charlotte throws away the nuclear bomb, Charlotte will become the public enemy of everyone. No matter what choice Charlotte makes, he is in a passive position. Unfortunately, General Trask still transported the nuclear bomb away. And this gives Charlotte the third, and the best, choice. No need to bear the risks brought by the nuclear bomb. It also shows that he has the ability to get the nuclear bomb at any time. Pure blood profit. General Trask's loss of composure did not last too long. Soon, he calmed himself down. It was also at this time that General Trask truly realized the horror of Charlotte. This is a very powerful opponent, both in terms of personal strength and mental level. Much more difficult to deal with than Magneto. So much so that General Trask at this time had a fear of Charlotte. He kept asking himself in his heart. Can I really win against such a monster? General Trask's dream is to destroy all mutants. But now, he feels. Maybe this dream of his. It will only be a dream for a lifetime. Because Charlotte is too exaggerated. But soon, the fear in General Trask's heart turned into hatred. Maybe Charlotte is really powerful. Maybe he is really invincible. But General Trask will never give up like this. He still has hatred, opportunities, and his own smart brain. He can definitely find a way to defeat Charlotte. Definitely. With such a belief. General Trask simply went into the laboratory. He started his own experiments even crazier. Since the live broadcast on the entire network. Charlotte easily defeated the defense line of the American army. After turning the nuclear weapons storage base upside down. His notoriety began to spread throughout the world. In the true sense, he became a demon king that everyone knew and everyone knew. This also led to the following period of time. Charlotte's fear value increased to an exaggerated level. It also directly led to Charlotte's fusion degree of the, accelerator, template. It soared to 77%. Although it is still at the level of LV4. However, its strength is already several times stronger than before. And Charlotte feels that it is not far from the level of LV5. Perhaps the template fusion degree reaches 85% which is the level of LV-5. At my speed, it shouldn't take too long. Charlotte thought in his heart. In addition to the enhancement of his own strength. In other aspects, Charlotte also gained a lot of benefits. First of all, it is reputation. After directly destroying the American military, two military bases, and rescuing a large number of mutants. His reputation among the mutant community has reached an extremely high level. Even many mutants have regarded Charlotte as the third leader of mutants. The first two are naturally Magneto and Professor X. Only these two people can be called mutant leaders. But from now on, Charlotte has also become one of the leaders. It can be said that. Magneto and Professor X have walked a lifetime to gain reputation. Charlotte gained it with just two actions. The Miami incident and the destruction of the Los Angeles base proved Charlotte's strong strength. In rescuing mutants who are about to be executed. It also proves Charlotte's position. This kind of powerful mutant with a position and strength. Isn't he regarded as an idol by mutants? However, the identity of the mutant leader. Charlotte didn't care too much. In fact, he didn't think about helping mutants and fighting for any reason. All the premises of his troubles were just to earn fear points. And the so-called, leader. It's just a way to earn fear points. 
Charlotte will not be brainwashed by the false name of those so-called leaders. What he wants is to have infinite power. However, he will not actively refuse the identity of the mutant leader. Now, maybe Charlotte can't use this identity. But he believes that it won't be long. The identity of the mutant leader will bring him great help. Having no sword in hand is not the same as having a sword in hand but not using it. I can attack humans directly without nuclear weapons, but I want to let humans know that I have the ability to do so at any time. Only by making humans feel fear can we mutants have room to survive. Good, good, good. This Charlotte is really a talent, and the kind of talent we mutants need most. Unfortunately, we still have things to do now, otherwise, I really want to meet this talent. In a small country in Eastern Europe, Magneto listened to the briefing sent by Mystique. Especially after Charlotte's explanation of his actions. He couldn't stop cheering. He thought Charlotte was a talent before. He originally planned to absorb him into the Brotherhood of Mutants to be trained as a core. But he didn't expect that Charlotte was better than he thought. If there were more mutants like Charlotte. Why worry about mutants not being able to establish their own country? Unfortunately, Magneto also has his own things to do. Otherwise, he really wants to meet Charlotte in person. It would be best if Charlotte could be his successor. In this way, he would not have to worry about the future of mutants. After sighing, Magneto quickly sent a briefing back to Mystique. The content of the briefing. It is to let Mystique continue to follow Charlotte and assist him. Help Charlotte grow up as soon as possible. It would be best if, in this process, Charlotte's thoughts were subtly changed. Let Charlotte become one of their own. Magneto believes that Mystique can definitely do this well. Because Mystique is professional in this kind of thing. In fact, it is true. After receiving the briefing from Magneto, Mystique lay lazily on Charlotte's body. With a soft look, looking at. Since the, military base nuclear crisis, incident ended. Charlotte quickly found Mystique in Polaris and met with them. And Charlotte fulfilled his promise. Afterwards, he told Mystique all his plans. Mystique admired it and couldn't help but transformed into the image of Anne Hathaway and seduced Charlotte. Then, the two of them rolled together. Of course, it was just a whim. No matter who they were, they didn't take this matter seriously. Let's not talk about Mystique. She is an old driver who has really seen a lot of storms. She has experienced nuclear bomb confrontations. Let alone this small scene. And Charlotte didn't care too much. Just take it as a relaxation. It happened that during this period, Charlotte had experienced a lot of things and was a little angry. Just take it as a way to cool down. As for being serious, Charlotte didn't even think about it. Please, this is the world of American comics. In this world, the relationships are so chaotic. Charlotte would not be surprised if anyone got together with anyone else. Naturally, he just let it go. Let's enjoy it first. Back to the topic. After receiving the briefing from Magneto, Mystique fell on Charlotte's body charmingly. She smiled sweetly and said to Charlotte, Just now Magneto sent me a briefing and asked me to follow you in the future. From now on, I will be yours. What are you going to take me to do? Charlotte replied while making her hands dirty, Of course, to do things that benefit the mutant community. Now I have become the biggest threat to the human world. But at the same time, I have also become the biggest support for the mutant community. Next, I need to continue to show my toughness. The tougher and stronger I am, the more friendly humans will treat the mutant community. This is the meaning of my existence. Mutants need a big devil. Only in this way can humans learn what respect is. Of course, all of the above is nonsense. His real idea is just to continue to make trouble in the future. Just prepare in advance. In case it is a bit too abrupt at that time. But it is undeniable. What Charlotte said makes sense. Mutants really need a big devil. It is no exaggeration to say that. The history of mankind is a history of war. Especially in the past. Wars have never stopped. Various wars, big and small, have almost run through the entire human society. Until that day. Humans mastered the secret of atomic energy. Gained enough power to destroy the surface of the earth. The human world has generally been at peace. It is ironic. Nuclear weapons are the most terrible weapons created by humans. But they have also brought the longest peace to human civilization. And this is the deterrence theory. 
it is precisely because of the mutual deterrence of nuclear weapons that the overall human race can maintain peace. And Charlotte's current status is similar to that of nuclear weapons. His existence itself is a nuclear weapon belonging to mutants. A nuclear weapon that is enough to destroy the surface civilization. In this case, humans and mutant groups have cleverly reached a balance. Humans will also be afraid of Charlotte. And dare not be too extreme to mutants. This is the meaning of the existence of Charlotte, the big devil. Mutants have been suppressed by humans for so many years in the past. Why have they been suppressed by humans? Isn't it because they think that there is no big devil like Charlotte among mutants? In fact, mutants originally had the opportunity to have an equal dialogue with humans. In fact, the power of mutants is not weak. Enough to make humans afraid. However, mutants can't stand the internal fighting among themselves. The most powerful Magneto and Professor X have loved and killed each other all their lives. Directly led to the mutants, the two most powerful LV4 bosses, unable to use them against humans. And after the loss of these two bosses. When facing humans, mutants can only be suppressed. If Magneto and Professor X can join forces, mutants would not have fallen to the point where they are now. Regarding Charlotte's remarks. At first, Mystique was not quite used to it. She felt it was too extreme. However, the more she thought about it, the more she felt it made sense. So much so that now, Mystique has wavered in the ideas of Magneto and Professor X. This is a terrible thing. You know, Mystique, Magneto, and Professor X are old friends. They are partners who have been together for a while. Even Mystique has betrayed her. Not to mention those ordinary mutants. And the reason for this phenomenon. In essence, it is precisely Charlotte who is too extreme. Facts have proved that. Compared with profound ideas. On the contrary, extreme ideas are easier to spread and easier to be accepted. Professor X suffers from not being extreme enough. He is a moderate who advocates peaceful coexistence with humans. In the eyes of most mutants, this idea is different from surrendering to humans. Of course, no one supports it. Only Professor X did a lot of good things for the mutant community. Otherwise, his leadership position might have been abolished long ago. As for Magneto, he is a war advocate. But now that Charlotte has appeared, Magneto's problem has also emerged. That is, it is not extreme enough. Compared with Charlotte, Magneto is really too gentle. After another big thing, Charlotte did not rush to make trouble again. Instead, he settled down in Los Angeles for a while. During this process, Mystique was always with him. Charlotte had no opinion on this. Anyway, it's free, so why not sleep with it? Polaris was a little jealous. But, the same thing. The American comic world is not particular about trivial matters. It's not a big deal. Compared with these, Charlotte cares more about another thing. That is, the attitude of human officials towards him. Ever since Charlotte showed his super-destructive power and his idea and ability to seize nuclear bombs. The attitude of human officials towards Charlotte has also become gentler. No, to be precise, it is not gentle, but fearful. The most direct manifestation is. Those teams that were originally densely packed in Los Angeles, searching for Charlotte's traces everywhere. All disappeared. Obviously, the officials of America were also worried about angering Charlotte. So they directly took measures to prevent further conflicts with Charlotte. Even the wanted order for Charlotte became pretentious. In addition, one is the treatment of mutants. The officials of America changed their previous tough attitude towards mutants. Instead, they began to gradually gradually treat mutants kindly. Even some politicians called for active protection of mutants. Even so, there are still many people who support it. Again, the same thing. When America suspects that you have weapons of mass destruction, you'd better really have them. If you don't, you're a tragedy. But if you really have them, then, the officials of America will listen to you patiently. However, although the attitude of the officials of America has eased a lot. However, Charlotte has not really let his mind go completely. In fact, he is more cautious than before. He knows very well that America's easing now is preparing for the next attack. It may not be long before the conspiracy against Charlotte will come back again. But Charlotte is not afraid. After more than half a month in Los Angeles. Charlotte called Polaris and Mystique over. You don't have anything to do right now, right? 
Charlotte asked. No, I've dealt with everything. Me too, what plans do you have? Mystique asked Charlotte. Charlotte didn't keep the secret and said directly, I plan to move to another place. There are no more stages in Los Angeles, we have to find a bigger stage. And the next stage may be your turn to perform. Hearing this, Polaris became visibly excited. These days, under Charlotte's guidance, Polaris's strength has improved by leaps and bounds. Now, she has long wanted to try how strong she is now. And the pillow just came to her. Charlotte said that she would build a stage for Polaris to show her abilities. How could Polaris not be excited? Mystique, however, remained calm. Can you tell me where the next destination is? Charlotte said directly, New York. New York is the real center of America. Its influence on America is self-evident. Charlotte just planned to take action in New York. I think this stage is big enough. No problem, just prepare, we will leave in the next few days. New York, I hope there will be fun things. Charlotte finally said to Mystique and Polaris. The action to New York. It is not top secret. After all, there are three people. So soon, the American officials got the news. However, even if they were discovered, it would be fine. Because now the American officials dare not do anything to Charlotte. Before they are absolutely sure that they can deal with Charlotte. The American officials will just treat Charlotte as if he does not exist. Unless Charlotte takes the initiative to make trouble. Otherwise, they dare not show their teeth. But they dare not really relax. The main thing is that what Charlotte did before was too outrageous. They are also afraid of Charlotte, throwing a mushroom egg or something to New York. If you can't beat him, you can't afford to provoke him, so you can only hide. Almost overnight, the rich and politicians in New York ran away. They were afraid that if they stayed in New York, they would be killed by Charlotte accidentally. As for the civilians in New York City, well, I wish them good luck. However, humans are not a race that will give up easily. While fearing Charlotte, on the other hand, they are stepping up their research on ways to fight Charlotte. The current calm is only temporary. It won't be long before the storm hits. New York, as the heart of America's heart. There are too many names. The city of gold, the city on the hill, the city of sin. The best and the worst are concentrated in this city at the same time. This city has an indescribable charm. However, Shenmu Cheng did not notice any charm. He only saw freedom. EMMM, a free gunfight. Looking at the two groups of people on the street, shooting guns. Charlotte shook his head speechlessly. He said to Polaris, who was eager to try, let's go another way. Polaris originally wanted to join the war. At this time, he could only sigh. Well, I wanted to help my compatriots. Yes, one of the two sides in the gunfight just now had mutants. Normally, mutants would never dare to use violence on the streets openly. But since Charlotte made a big move in Los Angeles, the attitude of the American government towards mutants has changed 180 degrees. From the previous discrimination and suppression to the current wooing and appeasement. The status of mutants has risen sharply. And all this is because of Charlotte. However, Charlotte doesn't think there is anything wrong. Anyway, he doesn't care about these. In Charlotte's view, the identity of the mutant leader is just a persona. No one really believes that he has the mutant community in his heart, right? Oh, Polaris believes it, then it's okay. Charlotte took Polaris and Mystique and planned to take another route. But those guys who were excited about fighting, obviously didn't intend to let him go easily. I don't know which guy saw the three of them. He took the opportunity to shoot at them. Such an attack, of course, could not threaten them. But it succeeded in stopping Charlotte. Looking at the string of bullets suspended in front of him. Charlotte said to the two warring parties expressionlessly. Please, who can explain to me what this means? Looking at the strange scene of bullets suspended in the air. The two warring parties also stopped. While looking at each other, they were also a little scared. Obviously, they had guessed the identities of Charlotte and the others. Mutants. Mutants in America are now AT0 race. Everyone knows that they are not easy to mess with. No one dared to admit it. In the end, a mutant who looked like a leader stood up. Fellow countrymen, hello, I am Fang, and I am also a mutant. I will never attack my fellow countrymen, it was the Hellfire guys on the opposite side who did it. Facing Fang's accusation, 
The Hellfire guys were also anxious. Bullshit. Those bullets are all 9mm, only you will use this kind of bullet. Facing the two sides of the argument, Charlotte sighed. Then, the bullets flew out and wiped out the people on the Hellfire side. The clean and neat clearance almost frightened the mutant named Fang's legs. He is a mutant, but his mutant ability is just a pair of fangs that can be extended in a strong bite force. Such an ability is not bad for ordinary people. To deal with a mutant like Charlotte who wants a group of lives with a wave of his hand, isn't this a joke? Moreover, through Charlotte's appearance and means. Fang also recognized Charlotte's identity. Destroyer. Now America, everyone nightmare of the mutants. He is also recognized as one of the strongest mutants today. How could Fangs not be scared when he suddenly ran into such a big guy? Don't worry, man, I certainly believe you. Can you take me to your headquarters? I just need a place to stay. Charlotte came to Fangs. Tidy up his messy clothes. Smiled and said gently. However, Fangs couldn't relax at all. This is the destroyer. The killer who killed without blinking an eye and almost nuked Los Angeles. Even though he knew that Charlotte would not usually kill mutants. It was still enough to scare people. However, facing Charlotte's request, he didn't dare to refuse. What if he made Charlotte unhappy, wouldn't he be dead? He could only make a bitter face, squeeze out an ugly smile, and said to Charlotte, No, no problem. I'll take you there now. Lord Charlotte, I have always admired you, and I am so happy to meet you now. If we can never meet each other for a lifetime, that would be even happier. Unfortunately, there is no if. With Fang's willingness, Charlotte arrived at his nest. It is a single family building located in Queens. After entering, Charlotte found a sofa and sat down casually. And Fang stood aside tremblingly. It doesn't look like a master, but more like a servant. Charlotte didn't think there was anything wrong with this. He said casually, this place is not bad, and the concealment is also good. How about taking me in for a while in the future? How dare Fang refuse, and immediately replied, I am honored. As the saying goes, a man who knows the times is a hero. At this point, Fang dares to say no. By the way, you have a group of subordinates, right? I want them to help me with something. That should be no problem. Facing Charlotte's, kind, eyes, Fang nodded faster than anyone else. No, absolutely no problem. That's good. After a pause, Charlotte continued, by the way, don't use 9mm next time, the power is too ordinary. Hearing this, Fang was almost scared to death. This is a naked threat. The key is that he didn't dare to refute. He could only nod. Okay, I remember. Looking at Fang who was already scared, Charlotte was finally satisfied. Nodding and said, Okay, you go down. When Fang's left the room, Mystique couldn't help but be curious and asked Charlotte, What plan have you come up with? Charlotte didn't choose to hide it this time. She said openly, it's nothing, just give humans a chance. An opportunity to challenge me. If the first Miami incident was to let humans know of his existence. The second Los Angeles incident was to make humans afraid of his existence. Then, this third time, Charlotte planned to make humans completely afraid and desperate of him. He came to New York without hiding his whereabouts or dodging. The purpose was to tell everyone. I'm here. You can target me. And then, all the conspiracies against him will be completely torn apart and completely destroyed. When the human side uses all means and cannot defeat Charlotte. That's when they really feel desperate about Charlotte. At that time, the fear of Charlotte will reach a peak. Of course, this plan is very risky. There is a high possibility of failure. After all, human technology is still very advanced. Who knows, humans may have developed some means to deal with Charlotte. However, Charlotte himself is confident. The more he studies the ability of vector operation, the more outrageous it seems. Not to say that he is completely invincible, but it is still no problem to be basically invincible. If you want to defeat him, you can only let the LV-5 mutants come to the mechanical deity to deal with him. And now, the only LV-5 mutant is Grey Jean. However, Grey Jean has no reason to deal with Charlotte. Before, Charlotte did not kill those X-Men for this reason. In addition, Charlotte is in a righteous position at this time. As the leader of the mutants, even Professor X would not want to kill him. 
This makes Gretchen have no reason to deal with him. As for whether Grey Jean will awaken herself. It is possible, but the possibility is very small. Basically, you don't need to think about it. In this case, Charlotte can naturally let go. What if he gives humans enough time to study and target himself? If you don't accept it, just come and crush me head on. In addition, Charlotte's current attitude is basically equivalent to directly intimidating the top leaders of America. Let them know that as long as Charlotte wants, he can go anywhere in America. Even New York is not safe. Where else can you hide? In this case, harvesting fear value. Naturally, it is simple and easy. Of course, Charlotte will definitely not tell these real purposes. The explanation to Mystique is for mutants. Moreover, this statement is in line with reality to some extent. Because the stronger Charlotte is now in front of the American officials. Then, the status of mutants will be higher. After figuring out Charlotte's plan. Mystique, there is no doubt. She completely recognized Charlotte. No matter what Charlotte's real purpose was. However, he did improve the status of mutants. This point cannot be changed, it is a fact. Based on this point alone. Charlotte deserves the title of mutant leader. After understanding Charlotte's thoughts. Mystique quickly said, since you don't have anything important to do in the short term, I'll take a leave. It just so happens that there is an old friend nearby, and I plan to go to his place to sit. Charlotte guessed who this old friend was. Who else could it be besides Professor X? He did not refuse, nodded and said, go, have fun. By the way, say hello to Professor X for me. Although Charlotte and Professor X did not get along well before. However, in essence, he still respected Professor X. Although he was a little naive, at least he was willing to do things. It's much better than those people who talk a lot but do nothing. Just for this reason, his impression of Professor X would not be too bad. As for how Professor X thinks of him. As for Charlotte, I don't know. After Mystique asked for leave. She left soon. Only Polaris and Charlotte were left in the house. Polaris, another person who couldn't sit still. After watching Charlotte pick up a book and start reading. She immediately suggested. Well, Lord Charlotte, why don't I help you collect information about New York? Charlotte saw through Polaris's true thoughts. Collecting information is fake. Going out to play is real. But it doesn't matter. Let her go. Go ahead, just be safe. After getting the answer, Polaris went out immediately. In her heart, Charlotte is good in every way, except that she is sometimes too quiet. Being too quiet often leads to boredom. Charlotte can be patient and calm herself down. Polaris can't be patient. So, where should we go to have fun? Why not go find fellow mutants first? Fangs must know about this. I'll go find him. Polaris thought of this and quickly chased after Fangs in the direction he left. X Academy. Professor X arrived at the gate early to wait. Accompanying him were Grey Jean and Dr. Beast Hank. He didn't let them wait any longer. Soon, Mystique, dressed as a beautiful woman in the workplace, appeared in front of them. Long time no see, Charles, Hank. Oh, and little Grey. Grey Jean is now over 30. Outside, she is old enough to be called aunt. But in front of Mystique, she is really a junior. After all, Mystique has been active since the Cold War. Long time no see, Raven. I'm glad you can come to see me. How about staying here for a few more days? Professor X was a little excited. Such emotions are rare in him. From here, we can also see the status of Raven in his heart. It can be said that she is only second to Magneto. In a sense, Raven and he are childhood sweethearts. The two grew up together. He has always regarded Raven as his own sister. When Raven left and chose to follow Magneto, he was still lost for a long time. How can he not be excited to see Mystique Raven again? It's been a long time since we last met. You are still as elegant as before. I'll listen to you this time and stay a few more days. It just so happens that I have nothing to do during this period. Seeing Raven agree, Professor X's face was obviously more smiling. But soon, the smile on his face faded again. Well, you have been following Charlotte recently. Are you okay? Hearing this, Dr. Beast and Grey Jean, who were originally smiling. The smiles on their faces immediately disappeared. Obviously, they didn't have a good impression of Charlotte. In the eyes of most mutants. Charlotte is definitely a hero. 
because he has improved the status of mutants with his own efforts. However, in the eyes of some mutants, Charlotte is not a good thing, because he is too extreme. This is even more so in the dub-dominated X Academy. Magneto may appreciate Charlotte. However, the mutants of X Academy will never think so. Their philosophy has always been to let humans and mutants live in peace. Instead of competing against each other like now. It seems that mutants and humans have achieved a good result now. But in fact, the hidden dangers of this situation are very huge. The so-called balance is nothing more than built on the basis of absolute violence. And the balance established by violence will eventually be broken because of violence. When the human side has absolute confidence in dealing with Charlotte. Then, not only Charlotte. The entire mutant community will suffer because of this. This is also what Professor X has been worried about recently. Originally, he wanted to ask Mystique to pass on a few words to Charlotte to persuade Charlotte. However, Mystique saw Professor X's thoughts and interrupted his spell immediately. Charles, I came here today just to see an old friend. So, don't talk about irrelevant things, okay? Facing Mystique's words, Professor X could only smile bitterly. Forget it, since I can't persuade her, I won't persuade her. Mystique is a guest at Professor X's place. Polaris is gathering mutants in New York to be a big sister. Charlotte is reading a book to enhance her control over vector operations. The human side doesn't dare to be so leisurely. A certain corner building. General Trask arrived by helicopter. Before entering the door, I saw a high-level executive coming over. Trask, you're late. You know, there are a lot of people waiting for you today. General Trask said calmly, I know, let's go in now. Following the footsteps of the military leader, General Trask looked at a file in his hand. On it was the main body of his meeting at a certain corner office. It was also his trump card for dealing with Charlotte, which he had prepared for a long time. He followed the leader into the meeting. Looking forward, he saw many high-level leaders waiting for him. In addition to these military leaders, even many high-level people in the political world participated in this meeting through video links. It can be said that this is the highest level meeting in America today. No one else. Since General Trask is here, let's start our meeting. There are two themes for this meeting. First, establish a human strategic agency with the highest level of authority. This agency has only one purpose. That is to protect the status of mankind and maintain the absolute rule of mankind. In the past, humans did not regard mutants as a serious threat. So, even if there is hostility, it is only an internal matter of the military. It does not involve the height of all mankind. But since Charlotte caused the Los Angeles incident, humans' vigilance against mutants has been raised to an extremely high level. It is also the first time that humans have felt. How terrifying a mutant who is so powerful that it exceeds common sense is. It is no exaggeration to say. As long as there are a few more mutants like Charlotte in the mutant group. Whether humans can still be the overlord of the planet is a question mark. In order to maintain the status of humans, and to deal with other, Charlottes, that may appear in the future. The military of America took the lead and gathered the power of the political and business circles. A department dedicated to dealing with the challenge of mutants came into being. The only responsibility of this department is to fight against mutants. Therefore, this department has extremely high authority. Its power even surpasses that of the commander-in-chief and the first minister of this department. If nothing unexpected happens, it will be General Trask. After all, General Trask's level is sufficient. In addition, he has always been committed to fighting mutants. It can be said that in the field of dealing with mutants, no one is more professional than him. In this case, it is well deserved for General Trask to be the first minister. The first topic was quickly accepted. It was passed unanimously. Then, we came to the real highlight of today. The second topic. That is, how to fight against Charlotte. Charlotte's existence is a sort of Damocles hanging over everyone's neck. Because of him, humans have to ease the relationship with the mutant community. Because of him, the top leaders of humans almost gave up the huge New York overnight. It is conceivable how much humans are afraid of Charlotte now. However, no matter how afraid of Charlotte, there is a problem that must be faced. That is, to fight against Charlotte. 
even, to kill Charlotte completely. This is also the main reason why General Trask was called here this time. Facing the attention of a kind of military and political leaders. Even General Trask was a little nervous. He knew that the plan he proposed next was related to his dream and the survival of his family. If the plan he pointed out next could not satisfy these people. Then, what awaited him must be a place where he could never turn over. Fortunately, long before coming here, General Trask had made sufficient preparations and plans. He believed that the plan he would propose next would convince everyone. No other reason, just because now. He found a way to completely defeat Charlotte. Charlotte's strength once made General Trask feel desperate. The ability of vector operation made him feel that he had no idea where to start. Because all the achievements and means of mankind are based on the vector. Power is a vector, electricity is also a vector, and even cold weapon warfare is also a vector. It can be said that human civilization is a civilization built on vector. In this case, Charlotte's vector operation is almost equivalent to God for humans. Can humans defeat God? However, after experiencing despair, General Trask finally cheered up again. He figured out a problem. That is, Charlotte is just equivalent to God. But after all, he is not the real God. His ability is indeed powerful. His vector operation is indeed almost unsolvable. But, in the final analysis, Charlotte is a human being, not a God. As a human being, you will be defeated and have your limits. Facing a military and political leader. General Trask took a few deep breaths to calm his nervousness and organized his words. Finally he spoke slowly. I have done a profound study on the mutant, the destroyer Charlotte. Because I have actually fought him. Although I failed in the first two fights, it was precisely because of the previous failures that I found Charlotte's weakness. First of all, Charlotte has a limit. He doesn't have endless energy or endless energy. As long as we can keep consuming him, it won't be long before he loses the ability to drive the vector. General Trask was right. Unless the level reaches LV5. Otherwise, the energy of any mutant has a limit. Charlotte is no exception. However, even so, it is almost impossible to let Charlotte reach this limit. Because Charlotte can fly. The military and political leaders present also know this. So, for what General Trask said. Not too satisfied. What's the point of saying something that everyone knows? And General Trask also knew that the first point was not considered work. But the following ones were fine. Secondly, the essence of a vector is the direction of force movement. But if, in a very short period of time, the direction of force movement is reversed continuously, then, the vector will become a paradox. Hearing this, the expressions of the military and political leaders present became a little serious. And General Trask also turned on the projector at this time. He presented the materials he had prepared in front of everyone. At the same time, General Trask also explained, Charlotte's vector operation is essentially the control of the direction of force movement. But this ability has a big flaw, that is, there are too many chain reactions. In a certain period of time, the more forces move, the higher the computing power required. And this high is still increased exponentially. When there are hundreds of different directions of force movement in a short period of time, then the computing power required to accurately control the direction of movement of these forces will be an astronomical level. In short, if a large number of high-intensity attacks are created at the same time in a very short period of time, there is a chance that Charlotte's ability will be out of control. What General Trask said is right. This is indeed the disadvantage of the vector operation ability. Moreover, this is still a disadvantage that cannot be overcome. Let alone Charlotte. Even Accelerator cannot overcome this disadvantage. In the original work, Accelerator once directly caused the computing power to crash due to the powerful forces in multiple directions. Resulting in the defense of the vector shield being breached. Even Accelerator cannot be invincible. Charlotte certainly cannot be either. Therefore, the method mentioned by General Trask does have a great possibility of defeating Charlotte. However, theory is just theory. It is not easy to put theory into practice. It is true that General Trask has found a way to defeat Charlotte. However, Charlotte must give him a chance. Unless Charlotte loses his mind and stands there to be bombed by General Trask. Otherwise, if something goes wrong, he will be defeated. 
as long as Charlotte does not stay in one place and wait for death. Then, the plan mentioned by General Trask, will always be just a plan. It cannot be implemented at all. Charlotte can fly. If he cannot beat him, he can easily escape. He cannot be left behind at all. And this point was also thought of by those military and political leaders. After realizing the biggest difficulty of the whole plan, soon someone started to challenge General Trask. What you said is very tempting, but how can you ensure that Charlotte will allow us to break his computing power limit? Don't forget, Charlotte can fly. And the flying speed can exceed Mach 2 at the fastest. With such mobility advantage, he can evacuate at any time, and we have no way to kill him with one blow. In the previous Battle of Los Angeles, Charlotte has demonstrated his mobility. The maximum flight speed reached Mach 2. It made a group of scientists call it outrageous. Such a speed is of course nothing for fighter jets and missiles. But it is quite terrifying for an individual. With this mobility, even if Charlotte cannot win, he can easily break free from all encirclements. Otherwise in this case, the top leaders of America don't need to be so afraid of Charlotte. Like Magneto, the top leaders of America just feel a little tricky. They can't even reach the fear when facing Charlotte. In the final analysis, isn't it the mobility of both sides, which is not the same concept. Magneto is powerful, but he can only crawl on the ground after all. At best, he can glide at a low altitude for a distance. If you really want to kill him, throw more missile cluster bombs to ensure a thorough death. If that doesn't work, throwing nuclear bombs can also ensure a sure kill. Therefore, when facing Magneto, the top leaders of mankind are always absolutely sure. Of course they are not afraid. But Charlotte is different. Charlotte's mobility is too high. If he can't beat him, he can just run. Even if a nuclear bomb is thrown, Charlotte can get away from the center of the nuclear bomb in the first place. There is no way to kill him. It is precisely because of the extremely strong mobility that the human leaders are so troubled by Charlotte. Trask's plan is indeed very good. But there is no way to implement it. No matter how much you prepare, it is useless if you can't hit the person. General Trask, of course, also knows this. However, he has been prepared for this. Under normal circumstances, we really can't keep Charlotte completely. But we can try another way. Use traps to eliminate Charlotte's mobility advantage. Then, won't our plan have room to play? Charlotte's mobility is like a bird in the sky. Under normal circumstances, it is impossible to catch it. However, an experienced hunter can trap the bird by setting traps. Once trapped, the only thing waiting for the bird is to fall into the net. And now, General Trask is also planning to use this almost, simple, method to deal with Charlotte. As long as Charlotte is attracted to a small place where he cannot use his speed advantage. Then, combined with the previous plan against Charlotte, isn't there a chance to kill Charlotte completely? As for how to lure Charlotte into the, trap, General Trask has already thought about it. As long as Charlotte is given an irresistible bait, it can be done. Thanks for watching.